In this video, we'll be looking at how plants uh, defend themselves against uh, pathogen entry. So notice that in this video, we'll be focusing on pathogen infections. So we're talking about like viruses, bacteria, fungi, etc. Uh, and we are not going to be focusing on uh, defense against herbivores, which will be uh, which will be quite different. So we're going to be looking at, uh, at at this whole process at a cellular level. So in terms of how individual cells respond and how the cells can actually communicate uh, during an infection. So we're going to largely focus on two major parts. Number one is how does a plant actually detect uh, an infection? And then secondly is how do they then respond to that infection and to prevent the spread of that infection? So first of all is how do they detect an infection? So let's say in this case, a pathogen uh, arrives at the, uh, at the, in the plant and it's is now infecting one of the plant cells here. Uh, and it could probably do this in the various different ways. It could, first of all, release uh, certain chemicals into the plant cell itself. Uh, so it could be toxins, etc., into the plant, or it could be digesting the cell wall itself. So the cell was made of a cellulose. So it could be uh, through this, they might release some uh, maltose and glucose in it either the presence of pathogenic uh, material or the breakdown product of the cell wall, the plant cell itself will be able to detect the presence of these chemicals. So because these are foreign chemicals that they are not expecting to have. And once they detect these chemicals, they uh, the nucleus then responds by triggering a cascade of reactions to start um, uh, counteracting these chemicals itself. First of all, these chemicals can actually travel um, across the plasma desmata to other cells and be spread to other parts of the plant. Now, obviously, this is not ideal because that would mean other parts of the plant will also um, be damaged by these chemicals. So one of the first things that the plants want to do is to stop that spread. Right? They want to prevent these chemicals to uh, travel further along the plant and causing the rest of the plant to actually die. So there are different ways to do this. One of the major ways that they, they, they start responding to this is by producing a chemical called callos. So this callos can do several different things. First of all, it can actually uh, deposit itself onto the uh, plasma desmata. So it literally blocks the plasma desmata, preventing these chemicals to actually travel further along the cells. So it can block itself like this. Uh, another thing that it could also do is that it could uh, deposit itself along the cell wall or between the cell wall and the cell membrane. So for example, it looks a little bit like uh, this. So by doing that, it means that even if the pathogen does manage to get into the cell wall, it won't be able to actually enter the cell itself through the plasma, uh, plasma membrane. So again, further preventing entry of the pathogens. Another thing they could also do is they could also uh, do the same blocking mechanism at the sift plates in the phloem. So the phloem has sift plates that allows the assimilates to pass through them as your normal uh, translocation process, but it could also become a method for the pathogen to travel. So they could actually block the, sift, uh, the holes in the sift plates, preventing uh, the uh, pathogens or the pathogenic material to actually travel to other places in the plant. So they can actually block up all of these uh, gaps of so plasma desmata, sieve plate holes, uh, and also preventing the entry through the plasma membrane. So these bits are called callos. Another thing that could also happen is um, they could also signal more lignin to be made. So lignin, as you might be aware, would be uh, a chemical that is usually found in the cell walls of the xylem in particular, but actually they could also uh, be found in normal cells or regular plant cells in the case of an infection. So the purpose of the lignin is to prevent, same thing as the callos, prevent further entry of the pathogen itself. A third thing that they could also do sometimes is the individual cells can actually signal other plant cells that they're under attack. Uh, similarly, in a way that you will see in the uh, animal defense, when the white blood cells can actually release chemicals that travel to the rest of the body to uh, tell the other cells of the infection. So uh, these individual chemicals can be produced in the cell and before they seal off the um, the uh, plasma desmata, they can actually travel to other parts of the plant uh, via the xylem or the phloem as well, uh, or just simply diffusing between uh, the plant cells um, 
uh, through the plasma desmata, etc. So it's about signaling and telling other cells what uh, what they need to do. So for example, in this case, uh, it could be that this cell is first signaled uh, by this cell that, okay, we're under attack. And then once they form this layer, they then pass on the signal to the next cell, which then tells them to start building their callus and lignin layers, which then goes on to the flow of enzyme, signaling other, the rest of the plant to do the same. So it's kind of almost like a chain effect or a cascade effect. Now in certain situations, some of these uh, cells can actually produce further chemicals that are released out of them. And these could be antibacterial chemicals or antifungal chemicals, depending on what pathogen is actually attacking them. And these chemicals can actually directly destroy the pathogenic material. So for example, in this case, let's say we've got these chemicals here um, and the chemicals uh, from the pathogen are released outside here as well, then these antibacterial um, chemicals can actually counteract these pathogenic materials here as well. And it stops these chemicals from causing harm to uh, the cells themselves. And actually in a lot of situations, these chemicals that um, the, cell, uh, the plant cells release could be used by humans as uh, antibacterial chemicals like the ones that we find in uh, a lot of cosmetic products or antiseptic materials uh, such as uh, tea tree oil or mint or peppermint or aloe vera etc these are actually examples of plants defending themselves against pathogen and actually humans have found a way to use these chemicals so there you have it this is a uh, plant defense against the uh, pathogens so as a quick summary um, a pathogen can cause an infection in the uh, plants uh, by releasing some of its own chemicals into the cells uh, and uh, sometimes it could also break down the cell wall, releasing some of the products which are then detected by the plants. Uh, upon detection of this infection, the plant cells can then release chemicals to signal other uh, cells, adjacent cells, uh, about the infection and can even travel to other parts of plants to signal the infection as well. And then once they receive the signal, it will cause a, a production of callus and lignin to be deposited onto the cell walls or between the cell wall and the cell membrane, and also blocking the plasma desmata and the sieve plates as well to prevent further spread of the pathogen. Sometimes uh, the plants can also release antibacterial and antifungal chemicals that can directly counteract any chemicals released by the pathogen or even destroy them to stop their uh, attack on the plants. And this is plant defenses against pathogens.